Another common scenario that I'd like to take you through is when you have more than one SAP Business One company database that you want to connect to enterprise. So I'm going to take a scenario where I have an additional company database running on the same uh, HANA server, and I'm going to walk you through the process of getting that connected. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to register a second organization because with enterprise, every company becomes a separate organization. So you can register that organization with the same email address. However, it needs to have a separate organization ID. So I'm going to call this one OEC UK computer because it's going to be running on a UK database. So again, I just put that organization ID there and I choose register. You'll see I get the same messages I got before, the registration has been completed and I need to check my email for a message with the account activation link. So if I now go into my mail for that same account, you'll see here it is, here is the email that's come through and it's saying you've become the first user and an administrator of this enterprise organization, OEC Computer UK. So I click on activate and now it will take me into the screen letting me know that my organization is now active and I'll sign in with that same username and password. And now you'll see on the left hand side, I have two separate companies. I have my OEC Computers USA HANA and I have my new organization here, OEC Computer UK. So to swap between them, it's just a simple matter of clicking on the company that you wish to swap to. So there it is, OEC Computer UK, and now I go back to the same process. So I go in here into my settings. I'm gonna go and set an organization name. So OEC Computers dash UK. Actually, let's keep it consistent. So I'll say UK dash and HANA. And I'll save that. That's now done. And then I want to put in my integration details. So I click on integration, and this is on exactly the same server as my OEC Computers USA HANA. So I can click back here, and all I need to do is go into the integration option here and copy and paste that value across here into the integration URL. Okay, but now remember, every database needs to be connected to a separate port. So my US company is connected to port 8099. So I'm gonna connect this one to port 8098, and then I'll hit save. My integration URL has now been successfully updated. And so what I can do is I can now go and install the enterprise data service again on that same server, except now I'm gonna configure it with port number 8098. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're back on the same server, and I'm assuming that not too much time has passed since you last downloaded the enterprise data service. If it's been more than a week or two weeks, you may wanna go ahead and re-download the enterprise data service from the uh, integration page that we in downloaded it from in the first instance. But right now it's only been two days since I did the last video, so I'm gonna use the same one. So all I need to do is I go in here into my downloads again, and you'll find there it is, there's my enterprise data service that, I have, uh, that I've already downloaded. So I'm gonna right click on that again, and I'm gonna choose run as administrator. Now this time I want to install it into a different location. All right, so if I put it in the same folder structure, it's going to overwrite the previous installation and all its any files. So you definitely don't want to do that. And then I'll say next, and then I go in, I'll say that it's port 8098, and I will put in a service ID suffix, and I'm going to make this HANA UK, and then I'll say next. That's the name that's gonna go in the, the list of Windows services, same as before, I'll say next and then install. Give that a couple of seconds to run. 
Again, I want to put in my username here, my email address, so that I can go and complete the rest of the uh, configuration in the backend system, and I'm going to hit save and close. That's now done, my service is installing. We'll let that finish off. Now, the other thing to be aware of is that, of course, um, you can go in now and you can take a look at your services. And when that is installed correctly, you'll now see that under my enterprise data service, I now have two listings. And you see, there's the first one that I did, the HANA US, and then here's the one that I've just done now, HANA UK. And it's actually showing me this one's running on port 8099, and this one's running on port 8098. All right, so if that's done, then all I need to do now is continue on with my standard setup. So I'll say finish there, and that's now done. Let's go back to our other screen and let's complete our setup. And so now I'm back in the Enterprise Web Server UI. I've got my firewall has been configured to open up port 8098 as required. So now I can simply click on here on Check Network, and all things being equal, I will get a success message. Yes, that network access to the EDS works. All right. So then we go into our next step, which is going to connect. And all of these settings will now be exactly the same as the last time. The only thing that's going to be different, of course, is my SAP company database name. And the main difference here, of course, being that this will be SBO Demo GB because that's the name of the database inside SAP Business One. I have my SAP license server. Remember, again, this is the same URL as the HANA server, uh, except I'm using port 40,000 because it's the system landscape directory. I then put in my SAP username of manager and I'm using a standard configuration, so my SAP password is manager, and then I'll choose save configuration. We'll give that a couple of seconds. It's establishing that connection making sure that it can communicate through the EDS into the backend database. And then it's going to write that information across. You can see now, yep, successfully connected to the EDS. And you can now test the data access. So I'm gonna say okay to that. And again, the same process here now, I'll just pick one of my SAP Business One tables. In this case, I'll use the OCRD table again. And I'll click on check data access. And that connection occurs successfully. And there's the result of that connection. Okay, so that's really the, the, the process that's different. Now, of course, you then go in and you will go through that same data import process again. You'll go through the same process of granting access to the users, but all of that's exactly the same as the first video that I showed you. So that's basically the process. And now you can add a third, a fourth, a fifth, uh, however many databases you need on that server, just remember each one gets configured to a different port and then each one gets installed into a different location on your server.